Hey everyone, today is Monday, so yet again it's another story time. Before I get into story time, here's a quick little update. First of all, I got my Calphite Queen head. I got it a day after I made that last Monday commentary, so I'm very happy about that. I finished my collection. I'll post pictures of the Calphite Queen head on the floor and it in my bank with all my other heads. Put them up on the screen right now. And then I went and killed 4,000 Chompy Birds. Don't even ask why, because I don't even know why. I decided to just do some like trim completionist cape requirements just because I just wanted to have them done. So I did a lot of them. I'm still not sure if I want to go for the trim completionist cape, but I really just don't think I'm going to be able to get the Castle Wars games in. But then I thought to myself and I said, you know what, school's coming soon and I'm going to be very busy just you know, doing schoolwork, going to class, and I was like, what if I just AFK'd Castle Wars games, or played Castle Wars games while in class, or while, you know, doing my homework? It is a good way to get it done, and it's just a good way to get it over with, so if I really wanted to, I guess I could go for a Trim Completionist cape, but I still have to put in a lot of work with the Damarok statue, and the Fish Flingers, so I'm thinking about it, but I did all of the easy stuff pretty much. I only have mainly the hard stuff left, but we'll see. I really don't know if I want to go for Trim Completionist, but I did get the 4K Chompy Bird kills, and I have the hat right there, so that's pretty exciting. I'm happy that I finished that off. I don't have to do that ever again. I camped it, and I, I find it really funny that at the end of that, you actually get a little bit of range XP, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, maybe you get a decent amount of range XP. So I killed the last bird, and it came up with plus 30,000, and I said that was hardly worth my time. So... I was kind of like, oh, that's kind of stupid. You know, you get a 30,000 range XP drop for fucking killing 4,000 chompy birds, whatever. But anyways, right now I'm doing some prayer at my house. I am just putting some dragon bones on a gilded altar because I am close to being under 1k for prayer, the rank. So I want to get under that because I think it's cool to have under a 1k rank in skills and stuff. And I still want under 1k total rank. So this is helping my XP overall. And it's just something easy to do, especially while doing the commentary. So I've been trying to get some XP now since I've been wasting a lot of time with either, you know, getting chompy kills or killing monsters for their head. I just, I've been wasting a lot of XP, so to say. So now I'm just gaining a lot of XP. I want to do some Pyramid Plunder because the chances of Black Ibis Clothes is higher now. They increase the drop rate of them from the urns and stuff. So I'm really wanting to get that. The only three armor pieces I don't have that, like, boost your XP is the Flash Powder Factory Clothes which I don't think they really boost your XP. I think they help like, get Fordos potions and stuff. Uh, I'm not really sure. I never researched that. But the Flash Powder Factory clothes, the Master Room Crafting robes, and the Black Ibis clothes. So I would like to get the Black Ibis clothes. I would love to get a set through the gods. But once again, those are hard to come by, even though they increase the drop rate. So we'll see. I might do that soon. But right now I'm doing some prayer. So let's get into the story time, because that's what you guys are really here for. Anyways, this story is about something very funny and it happened to myself and it was just a really really funny experience and I thought I would share it with all of you because I usually just enlighten you guys with some real life or helpful information whether it's on dating or girlfriends or you know doing something in a game or setting your goals or don't worry about not getting picked on and etc I mean there's there's a bunch of things I try to motivate you guys and try to inspire you guys to do or not do and stuff like that. But this is just pretty much a straight funny story. Now, have you guys ever, to yourself, thought, this is really not a good idea, and we sh should probably not say anything, but you did it anyway? Well, this is what that story is. I was going to the airport because my bowling team goes to travel around from college, and we were going to Vegas. And we're getting on the plane. Like, okay, basically... If you've never been to an airport, which I really hope all of you have been to an airport or flew on a plane, because then you might not get what I'm talking about. But anyways, if you've never been to an airport, if you've never flew on a plane, basically you go into the airport, you go to your terminal, and you wait there for the plane to board. And you have to go through security before you get to the terminal. And you have to clear security, you have to take off your belt, you have to take off your shoes, you have to take off your everything, anything, jewelry, watches, you know, necklaces, anything like that. You have to take off everything pretty much. You're pretty much like in your pants, your shirt, and that's it. And your underwear, obviously. But everything else is off because it's in a bin, your phone is in a bin, your laptop is in a bin, your extra bags are in a bin because they scan it all so they make sure you don't have any bombs or anything like that. And then they make you step through this like kind of, you know, revolutionary machine. I really don't even know how to you know, say that, I don't know what it is really, but you go in this machine, you put your arms out from side to side, and pretty much, you know, your wingspan, and, you know, it makes like a full, like, revolution around you, 
the machine. It takes a picture of your whole body, I guess. I don't know. And they check if you have any, like, guns or bombs and stuff like that or anything, like, you're not supposed to have on you. So my team is going through security, and we take off all our belts and stuff like that, and we put it in the, the basket. And then we get up to the part where you do the revolutionary machine. And we had a rookie on our team. He was a freshman when I was a sophomore. And he goes through the thing. And he puts his arms out from side to side, okay? And there's this big black kind of, I guess, you know, TSA guy or something. He's the guy who just, like, you know, says, oh, you can go or, you know, whatever. And he says, you know, to Dom, he said, you can go. And, you know, he's pretty much free to just go through the security thing and get the rest of his stuff and go to the terminal. So what happens is my friends and I on the team, we decide to just screw with him. And not really screw with him, but this is something you really shouldn't be doing or saying at an airport. And it really shouldn't be taken lightly, and they didn't take it lightly, but this is something you're really not supposed to do. And if you guys don't know, airports are very, very, very sensitive about what's said. In New York, a common term to say is, like, that shit was bomb. Like, let's say I had a chicken dinner. That chicken was bomb. And that means, like, that chicken was awesome. That chicken was extremely crazy. It was awesome. It was great. You know, bomb just means good. Okay? So even if you said, like, you know, oh, this airport is bomb. When they hear airport and bomb in the same sentence, doesn't matter how you use it. Doesn't even matter. Okay? Like, you could have just said, oh, I'm playing Bomberman in the airport. They, they take that literally. Like, they, they really just, like, they crack you down. They're like, what did you say? Did you say bomb? I mean, they really take that shit seriously. And they should. They really should. I mean, I don't blame the airport system for taking the word bomb heavily because it really shouldn't be taken lightly. I mean, that's a lot of people's life at risk. So anyways, they just take bomb seriously. They take, you know, gun seriously. They take any of those words seriously. If you say that, they don't, you know, go lightly on you. They, you know, search you. They make sure you're clean. So this is where we said something to Dom that we probably shouldn't have said. So anyways, he goes through security, goes through the revolutionary machine, comes out. And the black guy says, you know, you're free to go. So me and my friend go, hey, Dom, good thing they didn't check your butthole for fireworks. And Dom just turns around, like, with this face, like, this, like, drop jaw face and goes, you didn't. And the big black guy goes up to him, the security guy or the TSA guy. He just goes up to him and goes, sir, do you have fireworks in your butt? He's like, no. He's like, well, I'm going to have to do a full cavity search on you. And we lost it. Now, we we didn't want to laugh at the time because then... It just seems like we're, like, going to get cavity searched, too. And we don't want that. But Dom literally, like, heard that he's like, you really think I have fireworks up my butt? Are you kidding me? There's I don't have fireworks on my butt. My friends are just being dicks. And he got taken away to the, the, the cavity search room. And we were dying of laughter. Now, you're, <laughs> you're not supposed to say anything like that. And especially we said it to him, good thing they didn't check your butthole for fireworks. You know, thank God they didn't take your fireworks that were up your butthole. He had to get full cavity search. And if you don't know what a cavity search is, it's when you get completely naked or when they look throughout your whole body, they pat down your whole body or like even look up your butt to see if you have any explosives or anything like that. And there's really no reason to, you know, think someone does have that. That's why they're not normal. But if someone like says something like what we said, then they have to do a full cavity search. And he did the full cavity search, and this big black guy's giving it to him, and it's hilarious. We're just laughing so hard, but we feel bad at the same time, because obviously it's our teammate, and, you know, he was just a freshman, so we had to let him do it. And, anyways, he comes back, and now I want you guys to all picture something really quickly. Just close your eyes for one second, okay? And his facial expression when walking back from the, the cavity search room was probably the most priceless face I've ever seen anyone make in my life, Okay? Close your eyes and think about these faces combined. I'm just going to say two references, okay? It was the combination of someone who went through the Holocaust, okay? So just picture someone, you know, someone like, you know, kind of upset, all right? That's just shocked that they just went through something, okay? And someone who just got robbed for their entire house while sitting there and watching it. And put those two together, and that was his face. His face was so surprised. It was like someone who just got raped. He literally just, like, looked like he got raped. He looked so morally defeated. He looked so just, like, down. He was so pissed. I mean, he didn't even have any words to say. He just got back, and he looked like he was a rape victim. And technically, he was a rape victim because he got a cavity search. But he came back, and he just, like, has this face on, and we're just like, like, you look ridiculous. Like, what happened? He's just like, 
I hate you guys. I'm never talking to you guys. I'm never going to an airport with you guys. You guys are dicks. I got a full cavity search because you guys are assholes. Let's go. And we just get o off of security. We're all out of security. And we go to the terminal. We just sit down. And Dom was just there, like, staring at his iPod the whole time. Just because he was so, like, shocked that that just happened. He was so pissed. He was so just blown away that he just got a cavity search. And then we went on the plane. And we went to Vegas. But that's the story. It was just hilarious. Like, it really was extremely funny that we literally said something ludicrous. No one is going to smuggle. Like, any normal kid is not going to smuggle fireworks up his butt. Okay, really? Like, let's be real. And <laughs> anyways, I mean, I guess you could if they were, like, messed up in the head. And there is some messed up people in the world. But, like, we are just a, we're a bowling team. Why would he carry fireworks up his butt? We don't have any plans to fucking blow up anything. And... It was just so funny because literally he went through the revolutionary machine and right when he's like, okay, thank you, sir. We're like, hey, Dom, good thing they didn't check your butthole for those fireworks. And he just turns around like, no, you didn't. Like, you did not just say that. And the black guy took him away, came back with his face that was priceless. And he was pretty mad. But it was so funny. And it was a story that I just wanted to tell because it came up to me recently. Me and my friends were talking on Skype about, you know, this kind of dilemma. And that came up and I was like, I have to tell this story to everyone because it's such a funny story. But... The moral behind the story, even as ludicrous as this story, this has a moral too. Don't say anything stupid when you're not supposed to. Learn when and when not to say stupid things. Because we just made this kid go through a cavity search. And God forbid he did have fireworks up his butt, which I really, really would be like concerned if he did. But even if he did, you know, he would have got thrown out of the airport and thrown off the plane and stuff like that. So just by chance, don't say anything when you're not supposed to. And you know when you're supposed to say something and not supposed to say something. Don't yell fire in a movie theater. Don't yell bomb on an airplane. Don't yell anything stupid. Just try to keep it to yourself, even though you know it's funny, because this was hilarious. And trust me, this was the best thing that ever happened to me at an airport. And it was the funniest thing that I've ever seen in a while. But it was just something that really it could have been prevented if we weren't just stupid. You know, if we weren't just like stupid kids and screwing around with them you know, he would have been fine, and we wouldn't have made him get a full cavity search, but it happens, it was funny as hell, and I thought I would share that with you guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story, don't forget to comment below and tell me your stories about, you know, whether you got in trouble for saying something, you got in trouble for not saying something, or someone said something at an airport to you and you got a full cavity search, I mean, any crazy stories where you got in trouble for saying something you really shouldn't have, then let me hear those, because I think those would be pretty interesting, you know, message me on Twitter, message me on Facebook, put them in the comments below, do whatever you want, but that's the story time topic this week, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you guys got a good laugh out of it, I know Dom is probably still going through that pain of getting full cavity searched, and uh, probably will never forget that for his entire life, but, you know, it happens, things go wrong, and shit happens, but it's a funny story for everyone else, so I hope he knows it was a good story, and it makes for a good story, but anyways, that's all for the story time, I hope you guys enjoyed, make sure to Follow me on all the shits that are linked in the description, Twitter, Facebook, and all that other nonsense, and uh, then you can suggest what story times I should do for next Monday. So anyways, that's all guys, I'll see you in the next one. Later everyone.